Uh, but the basic idea is that back when we increased our corporate tax rate from 34 to 35 percent, we were kind of in the middle of the pack of OECD nations. Subsequently, what happened was the countries around the world found that when they cut the corporate tax, that their economic activity increased and the welfare of their workers improved. Uh, and then they very often did it again. A typical country, since our tax increase has cut its corporate rate two or maybe even three times. And for economists, what that does is it gives us an enormous amount of data to analyze because there are countries that change their rate and countries that don't. And you can compare the experiences of those two types of countries. There's a big peer-reviewed literature that looks at that, including a paper that's about to, by a German economist that's about to come out in the American Economic Review. And what we do is we go through all those papers and we have charts that show, well, if this paper is true, what wage effect do you get? And most of the action is, is well north of $4,000. And, and that, that's where the number comes from. Uh, I'll go in the middle with the orange tie. Uh, yeah, one of the criticisms, Kevin, of the tax reform proposal is that the corporate tax rate is cut permanently. The individual tax rate phases out after mm -hmm. 10 years. Why, in your view, is that such a good idea? So, so the president supports permanent uh, tax cuts for the middle class and permanent tax cuts for corporations. And that's certainly the objective of the planners of this tax bill. But there are also, but there are also you know, Senate budget rules and reconciliation rules that are required to allow this bill to move th forward uh, with 51 votes. Of course, the hope for everybody is that, that you know, when the time comes for these things to expire, that they get extended. As happened, you know, I might add, even for the top marginal rate, when President Obama came into office. And so they extended most of the Bush tax cuts, uh, but even the top rate at the beginning, uh, which interestingly, they must have done because they knew that if you were to increase the top marginal tax rate during a recession, that it would be very harmful uh, for the economy. So back then, there was bipartisan support for the idea that you should not lift the top marginal rate. And so there should be bipartisan support. There'd be economic growth effects of, of bringing it down right now. I'll go back down into the middle there. <laughs> Robinson, One American News. Uh -huh. um, the two bills are different in that the House bill repeals or does away with the estate tax and the Senate doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that was a big point for the administration and Vice President Pence has voiced his support for repealing the death tax, mm -hmm. as they call it. What are your thoughts on that? And do you think a final bill will include a repeal of it? I think that, that, again, that's one of the things that the Senate and the House are, are working out. Uh, I know that the President very strongly favors the elimination of the death tax. And uh, if that is in the final uh, bill, I'm sure that he'll be happy about that. But he's listed his non-negotiables, and those non-negotiables I cited at the beginning. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.